Hi, my name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 19th year of teaching. Today, I thought that I would do an update video all about how I use my iPad in the classroom. I know that in most of the day of my life videos, you guys see me teaching with iPads and I have had several questions about that. And uh, things have changed since last year and since the last video I did. So I wanna give you guys an update as to how I am using my iPad. I have the iPad 10th generation and I really like it. It's, you know, it's basic. I don't use a whole lot of different apps or anything with the iPad. So any generation iPad that you have, or in fact, any tablet that you have that you can connect to Wi-Fi, at least using the current method that I have, will work for you. Even if you have a laptop that's a touch screen. So I do have a laptop that's a touch screen. For me personally, it's just too big because my favorite part about having this iPad is the fact that I am not tied to my board. I can wander around the classroom when I teach, I can be mobile, I can talk to kids and I can write and everything is still visible to the students and I don't have my back to the board. Now, I don't have that many issues now that I teach my juniors and seniors primarily, but you know when you're teaching those freshmen or you know if you're teaching those middle school kids, you know that you hate having your back turned to them and so having this iPad and this mobility has been really nice. So I wanted to show you guys my current setup and how I use my iPad to give you guys an idea if this is something that you are interested in. And as I change and update, I will update videos because the current setup that I have is not my favorite. So a little bit of background as to why I've had to change. I used to use AirDroid Cast to connect my iPad to my computer and my smart board. And our school has since tightened up security a little bit and really limited the sites that we're allowed to use. And pretty much any site that I can connect my iPad to my computer no longer works. So that led me a little bit of a panic at the start of the school year when I realized that all of these methods that I have no longer work. So what I now use is a Google Meet. So I have initially, I just created a new Google Meet every morning or every time I had to connect and had to type in all of that stuff and that became an absolute nightmare. So I just scheduled a event in my Google Calendar for it just says, you know, Meet or Dean Meet or something and I just scheduled it for the entire year spanning from the day that I started that until the end of the year. So it shows right up anytime I open up my Google Meet. Okay. So I'm going to flip you guys over to my iPad. I'm gonna walk you through how I use the iPad, how I join my Google Meet, the settings that I use so that I can project, and then the apps that I use to do this. Now, I do not personally have my student join the Google Meet on their Chromebooks. I feel like they're sitting in class with me. I have it projected on the board. I can enlarge you know, really well on the board. And so I don't want that distraction of having students have their Chromebooks out as well. I do have a colleague that also teaches from an iPad and he was the one that recommended using the Google Meet. And he does have his students join the Google Meet as well so that they can see things. So that's just a personal preference. But let's go ahead and flip over to my iPad and I will show you guys around a little bit. I have, as you guys can see, the Google Meet is open, or the Google Meet has been scheduled, so just meet all the way through June, and I can click on this, and then I am going to, hi, so there I am, so I can click just over here where it says share screen, and that's what's going to allow me to share my iPad screen. Because I can't screen record and share my screen at the same time, I'm going to jump back to my camera so it's going to be a little harder to see. But once you hit that share screen, you're going to click on start broadcast and it will just give you a little countdown. And then I am in sharing my screen. So everything that I do on here will now show up for my students on my computer. Now on my computer's end, I do have to do one thing as well to get started on the computer's end. So I'm gonna click on my meet here. And then I need to click join here too, so that it doesn't kick me out of my other meet. And that's because I'm using the exact same account for both. So join here too. And then we can see, move you guys back a little bit. Now we can see my screen and it doesn't look like anything until I swipe up 
and then we can see my iPad screen here. Now, the biggest issue is that there is a lag between what I'm doing on my iPad and what's showing up on my Google Meet, and that's the thing that I hate the most is that the big lag that we have. Okay, now we're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about some of the apps that I use that I really enjoy. The two apps that I use to do notes with my students are called PDF Viewer and Good Notes. So I've been using PDF Viewer for years, probably close to seven or eight years now, and I'm just starting to experiment more with Good Notes. So let me show you guys PDF Viewer first. So I save all of my classwork files on my Google Drive, and from Google Drive, I can open them up in PDF Viewer. So PDF Viewer just has kind of the basics. I've got a pen so I can write on my screen. There's an eraser. For math, it's great. There's a line tool. I can import pictures if I want to, um, but then some of these, so there is text, so if I wanted to type things, I could. But if I long hold my pen, I also have a highlighter that I can use. And with the line tool, you can long hold and then you've got these different shapes. So, you know, if you need to draw a rectangle for whatever reason, you can do all of those. And then there are different colors. So you can preset eight different colors. You can change the thickness of your line. You can change the opacity of the line. Um, and you can do that or of the, the marker, the pen, you can do the same with the lines, you can do the same with the highlighters. But what's nice is that I can zoom in with my students as we're talking and focus. And then, you know, as we're doing this, so read, write the function as an exponential function. So as I'm writing, the students can see this come up on the board and they can write it as well. So if I need to fix things, I can erase. I can also, if I'm like, shoot, I need to just make that a little bit bigger. I can expand that. I can drag and move things around. So, you know, as I'm working, if I run out of space, I can easily change my space with that. And so as we're working, I can really zoom in on those graphs of what we're teaching the students. That way they kind of know, hey, this is where we're focusing on, on the notes. And those kids that are in the way back of my classroom, because the back is really far away from the board, I can zoom in really close so that those students can see those. So if this is a multi-page document, you can see both pages on here, which is perfect. So as we're working, again, I can zoom in really close. I can do all of the work and then I have the notes for the students. Okay, so this is how just a quick of um, my PDF viewer. GoodNotes works really the exact same way. I just find that the handwriting in GoodNotes is just a little bit better. Um, and then when I'm changing my colors and stuff, I'm not having to go into all those menus. The colors are just on the side and I use colors a lot, but I can do the same thing. I can zoom in wherever I need to and I can write And then I can select if I wanna select and move things around. So it's got those same kind of basic features that you use with both of them. Um, with GoodNotes, one of the nice things is that I can, so here are my notes for Classwork 4.1, and then here are my Classwork notes for 4.3. 4.2 is an exploration activity. Now, normally these would be done, but I forgot my iPad, so I just did it on paper. And I have a little divider saying Chapter 4. But you can see here are some of my notes from Chapter 2 when we were talking about inverse functions. So I have this digital copy of all of the notes that I've done with my students, which makes it really easy to find something if I realize that I forgot to upload that digital copy for my students. Now, I do have the same thing with PDF Viewer. I've got a couple of tabs open, but I can go back into my documents and then I can find those. So it's not quite as easy to find my past notes there, but it is in GoodNotes and I'm thinking thinking eventually I would love to have, you know, once I kind of know what all my notes are, I could already have my pre-calculus like notebook already set up and I've got all of my notes loaded in here. And then maybe I can add one for the warmups and all of that. But I really enjoy, am enjoying this, um, the good notes. Now I'm using the free version. So you're only allowed to have two or three notebooks. And I'm thinking if this is something that I really start enjoying and I can get the projecting of my iPad better, I may start 
and do the paid option for this. Now, the other nice thing about both of these, so we'll go back to PDF Viewer first, I can add this straight to my Google Drive. So I can hit the upload button. I always go from annotations embedded, I go to flatten. That for me, when it goes into my drive, then I can see the annotations and I know that this is my annotated copy, my answer key copy when I post it on Canvas. If you just leave it as embedded, at least from your preview of Google Drive, it, you can't tell the difference between this one and the one you didn't fill out. So flatten annotations back. And then when you hit share, then you can select the drive that you, you know, or wherever it is that you wanna share this to. And so then I would click on drive and then I would select the folder that I want this to go into. And the same when I'm looking at GoodNotes. So I'm gonna hit kind of right underneath that house and then instead of, um, let's see, these three dots here, I'm gonna click select pages, and then I'm gonna select, so if it was these last two pages I wanted to export, and then I'm gonna hit export. And then again, I wanna save those as a flat in a PDF. And you know, you include background, include annotations, like any of those things, you can turn those on and off. And then when you hit export, you have the same choices. So again, I would select my drive and select the folder that it goes into. As just a quick glimpse of what this looks like for my students. So here we're looking at the computer screen or my projector screen and on my iPad. So here on my iPad, as I write things, it shows up directly on the projector. So it's really easy. I can zoom in on something you know, when I'm talking with my students. So I talk to them, you know, we have to make sure that A is greater than one, A or a greater than zero, it can equal one, and X is any real number. So I can highlight things that I find important. If I want, I can erase some of this. I'm like, oh, I just wanna erase that and have the rules highlighted, I can. And then I can write directly on my iPad. And again, it just projects right onto the board for my students. And then I can be mobile, wandering around with this in my hand, and it is up on the screen. And I can zoom in way close for my students that are really struggling to see it. And that is really big on the board. Um, so this is just kind of a quick glimpse as to what it looks like for the students. I really enjoy using this again. So all I have, I have the iPad. I have just a, a basic case. I love Harry Potter. So I went with the Marauder's Map for Harry Potter. Um, and then I have just an Apple Pencil. I haven't always had an Apple Pencil. I've also used the Logitech Crayon, which I really like. And then before any of this, just as COVID happened, because I did have an iPad over COVID, I just used, I had a cheap $10 um, stylus. I doubt that I could find it, but I will leave a link to the stylists that I've used, any of them that I can find if that's something that you're interested in. I will leave a link for the iPad case too. I really like this iPad case. Um, it does not have a uh, a keyboard. I've had a case that had a keyboard and I'm finding that I'm not really missing it. Now, when I taught geometry, I really liked having the keyboard for certain things, especially because we were doing a lot of definitions and rather than me handwriting everything, it was definitely faster for me to type it. And then, so the keyboard then came in really handy, but now I don't really find that I need it. But the nice thing is this case does hold the pencil for me. So I don't have to worry about losing that. And you know, it's, it's not too hard. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too hard to just pop that out and, and use that. So I found this to be really helpful. Absolutely love teaching with my iPad. It's been such a great thing. Um, when I started last year, so if you guys have been following along with me for a while, when I started it last year teaching at this new school, we don't have iPads. Uh, my old school was a one-to-one -one iPad school and here we're a one-to-one -one Chromebook school. So I didn't have this and I was completely lost. I tried teaching with the smart board. I tried teaching with the, um, the document camera. I just tied treat tie. I just tried teaching from the board and it just nothing was working. I was struggling 
so much. As soon as I got this iPad, I was thankful that a science teacher had a grant for iPads that he was no longer using. And so he loaned me this one until I don't need it anymore. So I am so thankful to have this. It has really transformed my teaching and I just, I feel at home teaching from my iPad. So if you guys have an iPad laying around, I would strongly recommend play with a little bit. It does take just a little bit to get your handwriting to look nicer, but that's where I found good notes really like steps up your handwriting and makes it look so nice even if okay it's not gonna you know take chicken scratch into you know the most beautiful penmanship but it does like help kind of smooth out some of those letters so i would recommend downloading good notes adding a couple of pdfs in there of your notes practice you know writing on those it takes a minute to, you know, work on holding your iPad, figuring out the best way to hold it as you write. And, you know, it takes, it takes a minute, but practice it and then start using it. You, I think, would be amazed at how nice it is just to have that flexibility to wander around the room, you know, if Johnny's sleeping, you don't have to stop what you're doing or whatever. You can just keep teaching, walk over, kind of nudge them a little bit. You know, if somebody is doing what they're not supposed to on their phone, you can just quietly take care of that as you're still teaching and kids aren't even going to notice because now you're just constantly wandering around the room. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments down below. I am happy to address all of those questions that you guys have and help you out with this if this is something that you guys are interested in adding to your teaching repertoire. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with my journey as I teach, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but you can hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you guys have a mathy day. Bye.